Hello, and welcome to my 100 days in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. This strange gloom keeps getting thicker. No, no, not the Pokemon. Zelda's talking about the mist coming beneath Hyrule Castle. Above ground, it's making people ill and is affecting Hyrule's landscape. As we delve further underground, the Master Sword begins to glow. Hey, Zelda, doesn't that mean something evil is nearby? Zelda? Are you listening? Yes, I know the Zonai and Hylian ruins are fascinating, but I really think we should go. There's carvings of the Demon King for crying out loud. A glimmering hand holding a gloom-filled corpse. Ah, it moved. Zelda, this isn't the time for treasure hunting. can't stop it! My hearts! My arm! My, my sword! The undead being spreads his powerful darkness, lifting Hyrule Castle into the sky, then falls into the depths. Zelda! Don't worry, girl! I'll get you! Web, go! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! No! Zelda! Don't leave me! What? The green hand? What about Zelda? My cries were in vain. The green hand fuses itself with my arm, and it's unclear how much time has passed. My clothes were stripped away, and I awakened somewhere unfamiliar. A voice spoke to me, saying they knew Zelda, and that my arm had to be fused with theirs since mine was beyond saving. The Master Sword had decayed as well. On the bright side, my new arm can activate these devices. Devices, opening a path to get out of wherever I am. I find some archaic legwear, taking the fact that I'm going to have to overcome my fear of heights and dive into the clouds. You may be wondering, how is Link going to survive without his paraglider? Video game logic, my friends. Video game logic. Still on a sky island, I run into a construct, some kind of advanced ancient technological enemy. Although some are friendlier like this steward construct. Somehow, Zelda left her Pura pad with it for me to pick up. Looks oddly similar to a Nintendo Switch or Sheikah Slate. So is Zelda nearby or not? Cause this arm can't open everything, and now some spooky ghost is following me. The spirit informs me that he is the donor of my arm and that his name is Raru. Raru? You look a little different than your Ocarina of Time incarnation. He says I can open the door if I first visit the shrines to fill my arm with sacred light. Whatever you say, I'll grab this bow then be on my way to the shrines. They're actually called Shrines of Light that Raru filled with sacred light. This specific one grants me the Ultra Hand, the ability to not only move objects, but to also attach them to each other, aka better magnesis. And instead of monks waiting for you at the end, a pair of statues gives you a light of blessing. On this great sky island, there are two more shrines I need to visit before I can depart. And boy are they spread out. It took me a while to- oh no, is that what I think it is? Uh oh. Yeah. They're back supposed to mean? Nothing, I'm just saying you're back. You got a problem with my kind? You took my life! Anyways, as I was saying, these shrines are far apart from each other, so I cooked up some spicy peppers for cold resistance, rode a raft using Zonai technology, and climbed up the mountain to the second shrine, where I received the ascendability to, well, you know, ascend. On my way to the third shrine, a Leaky Leaky scoffed at my flame shield, then swallowed me whole. Me no like Leaky Leaky. Now what in the world is that? The fun's not over either when you kill it. The body rises as a last plea of forgiveness to its gods. What's this? What's this? The heat is then turned up by a flamethrower-wielding construct, prompting me to make a getaway via minecart not in the right way at all, all to reunite a Korok with their friend. Ooh. I spent the rest of day three traversing through the desultory terrain in search of the third shrine. Finally, I've been looking for that tunic. One ability I've been looking forward to is the power to fuse. In the meanwhile, I steal a fused weapon from a construct. Behold, the board guster. Not long later, the fuse powers are mine. I combine a rock and a stick to club down these stone walls, then use fire fruit to light up an arrow, essentially replacing the traditional kind of fire arrows. With those three shrines completed, I entered the temple, broke the first museum rule by touching the big stone, which brought about a vision of Zelda. She sheds a tear, then mysteriously disappears. Maybe she thought I was Dumbo the Elephant. Because man, look at the size of my ears! Oh, actually, she passed on the recall ability. Can I use it on my ears? Fine, reversing the movement of objects is cool too, I guess. Now let's get out of here. <laughs> Where am I going to get a fourth heart at? There is one more shrine on this island. You should have led with that. 
Seriously? Why did he only point out three to begin with? Whatever. With four blessings of light, I pray to the goddess statue, increasing my life gauge to open the back door of the temple. Raru states I'm exactly as Zelda said, then fades away. A small light appears before me, somehow drawing me to bring the master sword to it. Once in position, the sound from the reverse power is triggered, sending the broken blade to an unknown destination, where Zelda awaits its arrival. It's confused! No time for thinking. The floating island's ground shakes as a dragon soars into the upper skies, parting the clouds, revealing the earth below. Link, you must find me. Well, you heard her. Geronimo! Again, there's no way he could survive that fall. All I know is I see Hyrule Castle, I run towards it. Where did all these building materials come from? The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is sponsored by Hudson Construction. We've placed materials all throughout Hyrule for your needs. Viewers, I now know how it feels. I call upon my inner Banjo and Kazooie nuts and bolts spirit to help me craft a beautiful automobile. Go! <laughs> Why aren't I moving? Probably because of that horrendous glue job. Eh, it's fine. I need to get my steps in anyways. Whoa, that was close. What threw that? What in the name of Sam Hill is that? I don't know what that is, but I ain't messing around with it. That does remind me of how weak and fragile I am right now with only four hearts. So I'm gonna take a moment to pin all the shrines I can with a Pura pad. Also, look at the adorable Bokoblins waddling like duckies. <laughs> Surprise, mother Okay, I don't know if you noticed this last time, but what is with these Koroks and their humongous backpacks that inhibit their ability to walk? Were you Sam Porter Bridges before the Great Flood? Anywho, I got shrines I need to prove my worth to. Along the way, I saw the Satori horse and even tamed my own horse. A lady from the Mushroom Kingdom marked three treasures on my map. Then I wasted my whole day in this shrine just to realize, where is my super suit, the paraglider? Where is my super suit? Maybe if I start heading back towards Tyrell Castle, I'll find it. Nice lookout operation you got going on here, Robbie. What? Talk to Pura? I don't think I'd be interested in talking to P P Pura? You're all grown up. And you're, wow. <laughs> Hello, Pura. I'll be honest, I didn't hear a word she said. I was, uh, keeping an eye out for any attackers. Good thing I got this nifty radar with a yellow dot. So stop judging me. At least I'm not a pothead like this guy. Hold up. Do my eyes deceive me? Princess Zelda? Now she's flying, and now she's gone. Pura, you won't believe what I just saw. Wanna talk about it over dinner? Uh, no. Ooh, gonna need the emergency shelter after that denial. After recovering from that, Pura shows me the new sky towers that have replaced the Sheikah towers. That's cool and all, but when am I gonna get my paraglider? All right, how's this thing work? It's a trap! False alarm. The guardian tentacles were just prepping me for the launch. Wait, launch? <laughs> Dang, that is high. With my Pura pad connected to the tower's cable, I scan the surrounding region, updating my surface map and sky map. Back on solid ground, Pura has some concerns with the upheaval, meaning what happened to the surface while Zelda and I were underground. Four regions are experiencing strange phenomenons. She thinks they may be connected to Zelda's disappearance. Little did I know, I'd be seeing Zelda soon after, during the Blood Moon. In a creepy way, she narrates the return of fallen enemies. Whoa. Threatened once again. The ominous vibes continue as I dive into a chasm leading to a near complete darkness called the depths. Something to help light up the place are bright bloom bulbs. However, I'm still too weak to be poking around down here, especially with these gloom covered baddies. Had to learn my lesson first though. <laughs> So back to the lookout it was to figure out what I should do next. Just for Robbie to say I need to go back down there. Robbie lit up campfires for me to track him down, but first I came across a light route. It's pretty much the depths equivalent compared to a shrine. Except it doesn't have a puzzle, it doesn't heal you. Actually, it doesn't do a whole lot. Just lights up a small perimeter around it and can be used for fast travel. Oh freak! What is this cursed toad? Stay back! I want you to know, Robbie, that I almost died looking for you. Using the Pura pad, I snap a photo of the statue we need for research, then return to the surface. On the afternoon of the 10th day, I invaded the Bokoblins fort surrounding a new Skyview Tower in order to expand my map. 
Now I think it's a good time to hunt down those treasures. Fire in the hole! Bomb arrow number two! Fire! I have treasure number one in sight. Rubber armor. Pack up the bombs, Link. There's no debris blocking the second cave. Just some stones to hop over and st- Oh, great. What now? A stone talus? Forget that previous order. Deploy bombs! The treasure's gotta be here somewhere. Worst case scenario, that talus can no longer harm us. Luckily, fortune favors the timid. Barbarian armor. That attack boosting armor is actually huge to have this early on. And yes, your eyes do not deceive you. The tree are evil in this game. Let's see what Cave 3 has inside. Climbing gear. That's a lot of convenient items to already have. Speaking of convenience, not long after finding the three armor treasures, I ran into Impa. She informed me that during the upheaval, huge pictures called geoglyphs appeared out of nowhere. We went up in her hot air balloon to get a better look at one. Old literature states a dragon tear can be found within their borders. I leap from the balloon, pull out my paraglider, then keep my eye out for any anomalies that could be a dragon's tear. Amongst the numerous outlined tear-shaped drawings, one was filled in. Filled with what I assume to be the literal tear of a dragon, the liquid reverts back to a droplet form, then bursts out a glaring light, showing me a vision of where Zelda teleported after disappearing during the upheaval. Two personages showed up by her side, startling the princess. They introduced themselves as King Raru and Queen Sonya, the founders of Hyrule. This is no vision. This is a memory of Zelda having time traveled to the past. Impa says we must go to the Forgotten Temple in Hebra to learn more about these geoglyphs. Hebra is in the colder northwestern region, but of course I can't just beeline it there. I'm gonna stop by every shrine and place that piques my interest. Who's a good boy? No. No, it can't be. You can't pet the dogs in the sequel either? How can I help you? Yes, I'd like to return my copy of Tears of the Kingdom, please. You know how much I sacrificed? This sky tower door is stuck? Jeez, what else could go wrong this week? Am I the only one that knows how to climb? Apparently! You owe me your next paycheck. Now launch me into the sky. I haven't really checked out what the atmosphere up here has to offer yet. It looks like Six Flags has been installing their roller coasters up here. All right, I've had my fun. Back to the surface. I'm determined to go after every tower I see. That is, until I notice this well. <laughs> Something seemed a little off about that descent. Anyhow, I made it to that tower I was trekking to. Unfortunately, the control panel was not working inside. Uh, help! Down another well I go, because this guy caught himself in one of the ruins' traps. What would the people of Hyrule do without me? He kindly does return the favor by fixing up the tower, then gives me the advice. Work smarter, not harder. I decided to take that to heart. Instead of trying to get that catapult to function properly, why not just cheese the revertibility? It's clear by now that I'm suffering from the following syndrome. I got distracted! Hebra is northwest, but I've been going southwest for who knows how long. I did come across another geoglyph though. Wow, Zelda. You've got quite the island in Animal Crossing. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, where were we? Oh yes, Mineru, the sister of King Raru, suspects Zelda's time-traveling powers are amplified because of the stone. She also senses the power of light within Zelda, but the stone only amplifies Zelda's time powers. Trying to figure out how to get Zelda back to the future, Mineru mentions that when a secret stone is swallowed, the user transforms into an immortal dragon, but loses themselves in the process. Well, that complicates things. Link and I will entertain ourselves while we wait for you, Zelda. Hestu, is that you? Those trees over there! So scary! Shalaka. Hestu, are you telling me someone part tree like yourself is scared of a couple of ordinary trees? Oh crap! Oh crap! Stay back! I've got a mushroom on a stick and I'm not afraid to use it! To celebrate, Hestu dances with his maracas to expand my inventory in exchange for Korok seeds. After parting ways, things escalated quickly from that happy moment to terrifying demon-eyed arms chasing me in a nearby cave. I'm Audi 5000. Something good did come of it. Those terrifying limbs chased me over to another tower. I continue completing one shrine after another, some taking longer than others because of me not realizing the solution is right in front of my face sometimes. Nevertheless, I had attained enough stamina vessels for a whole extra stamina wheel strengthening my endurance. It was about that time too that I should go catch up with Impa at the Forgotten Temple. Where were you? Where were you? 
Further in the temple is a layout with all the geoglyph locations mapped out. Impa asked me to go find them all, but I'm just gonna plan on coming across them naturally as I investigate the phenomenons Pura mentioned. And what do you know? On my way to Rito Village, I find myself gliding over another geoglyph, which means it's time for another Zelda memory. To clarify, King Raru is a Zonai, while Queen Sonya is human. Sonya also senses that Zelda shares a blood connection with them, explaining how she inherited both light and time powers. It sounds like Zelda hasn't made much progress getting back to the present. Meanwhile, my progression is going great adding another tower to my database, and fusing whatever is necessary for these shrines. There is something terribly wrong with my outerwear though. I'm dressed in a skirt in snowy weather. That's why I cook all the meat and fish I've gathered to sell as meat skewers for a profit. That way I can buy some warm headwear rather than constantly needing cooked spicy peppers. The harsh blizzard conditions have ruined the Rito's crops leading to a famine. I reunite with Teba, the one who helped me defeat Vameto in Breath of the Wild. Ever since becoming the village elder, Teba hasn't been able to leave the village much to see what's causing such a harsh blizzard. He defers me to Hearth, who's currently in charge of investigating the blizzard. Hearth says the blizzard and famine aren't their only problems, they're dealing with sky monsters too. He does mention that Tulin, the son of Teba, could team up with me as he's developed a wind gust technique that could come in handy. He's just a bit further up the mountain and it seems his bow has been stolen by one of the new monsters from the upheaval. You mean this little cretin? <laughs> After retrieving his bow, Tulin tells Hearth and I that he saw Princess Zelda, and that she flew up above the cloud that Hearth says the blizzard is coming from. Approaching the strange cloud from the sides is impossible, so Tulin and I are assigned to see if we can enter it through the top, thus beginning our journey together. We scale the mountain, then with the help of Tulin's wind power, I can traverse the sky pieces piece by piece. Above us are tons of flying boats surrounding the cloud. You'd think we could ride them through the air, but no, they're bouncy. There's even a shrine full of boats here. Hold up, Tulin. I see a tower, and I can't resist. Hello, and welcome back to 100 Days in Tears of the Kingdom, where our two heroes are on their way to investigate the blizzard cloud. Whoa, 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 TV announcer. I just found a geoglyph. <laughs> Queen Sonya is down? What is going on? Oh, there's Ganondorf. The obvious culprit, of course. He's stolen Sonya's secret stone and uses it to transform into a more demonic form than he already was. With the Blood Moon, he brings forth monsters upon the people of Hyrule. All Zelda can do is use her Pura Pad to fast travel the trio out of there. Back to the present day skies, I find constructs trying to fend off the flying creatures. Interesting. That must mean the constructs are neutral. They must be made in Switzerland. Hmm, I haven't seen this Zonai tech yet. I wonder what they are. I'll jump on the ship's wind sails instead. Bound, bound, bound and rebound. We're now so high up that the freezing temperature is literally killing me. I had no choice but to return to Rito Village to sell more of my cooked goods in order to purchase more snow clothes. I fast traveled back up, then it was back to bound, 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 bound and rebound. We made it through the top and found the great ship that has saved the Rito before called the Wind Temple. Zelda, is that really her? A cold wind bursts from the hole of the ship and Zelda is nowhere to be seen now. The source of the blizzard is under that hatch. I try to open it with Raru's arm, but it's to no avail. A voice then speaks to us saying the hatch will open if we release the five locks. That definitely wasn't Zelda's voice, but my name is Link, which means I blindly follow mysterious voices. I break in through the ship's side to gain a better understanding understanding of this vessel, then went through the top to find and activate this device, releasing the first lock. The second switch lied in the basement of the boat. To get to the third, I had to design my own special kind of gear with an icicle while reverting the machine. My engineering career continued in my search for the fourth trigger, as I made my own twirly device then reverted it to open the gate. And last but not least, I used yet again another icicle to open the gate that held the last piece of the puzzle. The hatch is unlocked, then all of a sudden, the wind blew blows our socks off. Literally, the scourge of the wind temple emerges from the ark. Kogera, the ice behemoth that's been the cause of this blizzard. I got this. Sure, my partner in crime is some inexperienced kid, but if there's anything I've learned from anime, you can't doubt the power of youth. How am I going to beat this with my lousy weapon set and five hearts? 
Lucky for me, this battle is more about stamina considering how much I've been using the paraglider. Kogera fires off pieces of itself at us high in the air, to which I respond by falling right onto its sensitive pink ice skin. Trying it again? <laughs> they never learn. As long as I kept moving and was aware of my whereabouts, I was able to give myself enough space from its airstrikes. Halfway through, Kogera summons tornadoes. Tulin, behind me! Give me a boost! Now let him have it! Kogera reacts with a wall of tornadoes, but he forgot to make them all the same height. The ice shots continue to purge the air, and they now look to have more sporadic position in their making. With a little paraglider maneuvering, I made the kill drop right through the beast, ending its career serving the demon lord oh thank goodness i can really use that additional heart the snow and ice that were all over the ark melted away revealing a secret stone from that very stone the voice from earlier calls out to tulin it is his ancestor that served hyrule's first king as the wind sage his aid was requested by the king along with five other sages each of them entrusted with a secret stone Yet, they were still no match for the Demon King. In the end, they couldn't defeat him, so Raru sacrificed himself and sealed the Demon King away. Later, Zelda, the Sage of Time, told the Winged Sage that Ganondorf would return. She asked him to pass down the Secret Stone to help Link best Ganondorf when the time arose. Tulin accepts and becomes the Sage of Wind. Dude, he's just a kid. Is this really the right choice? Well, I guess Link has saved the world as a kid a few times, so whatever. Tulin gives me some of his new power in the form of a ring, allowing me to call upon his assistance whenever needed. Back in Rito Village, the snow melts away, eliminating the phenomenon that cursed their land. I celebrate with a roller coaster ride. Zora's domain, here I come. Okay, what's up with these towers being out of order? Who is responsible for this? Water. I need water. Sorry, bub, I got nothing. Maybe I'll find some at Zora's Domain. Except there's no clean water here because of the raining sludge. They say splash fruit can clean off the goo, so I'll give it a shot. Oh my, that is one handsome statue of Sidon. And there's me. And this is Sidon's fiance, Yona. You mad dog, Sidon, that's my boy! Yona's been repairing my Zora armor, but needs an ancient arowana to finish mending it. I don't know what that is. I'll go see what Sidon's up to instead. I find him at the peak, cleaning the water. He's been using his powers of water manipulation to separate the sludge from the flow that goes to the domain. He says I should go speak to their historian, since they suspect Zelda may have had something to do with the Sky Islands. Will do, brother. Unless this is that fish Yona was looking for. <gasps> it is! Yes, yes! Yes, yes, indeed. Swimming up the waterfall proves I am the Michael Phelps of this world. Now to apologize to that Zora I left in the sludge. Sorry, I didn't know this fruit would help you. It also clears the blockage to the tower, and high above that tower is the Death Star. The shrine inside fit that theme pretty well, too. The machinery got even more wild at the next shrine, totally obliterating everything in my path whether it was by heavy blasts or running them over. Then back at the lookout, this lady was sweeping so hard that she broke the wall with her broom. What's hiding back here? This horned statue must have just gone through a traumatizing experience. <laughs> On to Terrytown. Wait, how'd I get here? This is way far from the Zoras. Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. Breaking news! Coming in hot from the TMZ press. Hudson and Ronson have a daughter? Uh? Oh my gosh, there she is. Madison, you poor thing. You got your father's hair! Here's a sight for sore eyes. Witness the power of my latest invention, the flamethrower Roomba. <laughs> You missed! How could you miss? They were three feet from you! Or you can just burn all the grass. That works too, I guess. Hey, bub, why isn't this tower working? A flying monster took it. You mean this little cretin? <laughs> the next shrine celebrates the return of Discovery Channel's battle bots. Done! <laughs> I should probably get back to helping the Zoras. This raining sludge can't be ignored forever. As per Sidon's request, I go make conversation with the Zora historian. He shares with me a translation of an ancient Zora slate that describes a land of the skyfish with a droplet nearby it. One must shoot an arrow with the mark of the king to reveal a most wondrous thing. It also mentions a water bridge that connects the Zora to the sky. Okay, the skyfish, droplet, and water bridge are most likely just what they sound like. But what about the mark of the 
the king? Sounds like an apropos question for the king himself. Where could he be though? If not in his throne room, where? All I found instead was a group of younglings pretending to be king. King Dwarf and super punch and super kick. There's no choice. I'll have to hide in this secret spot. And that spot, it's... What are you doing here? Take the hint and scram. Fortunately for me, kids aren't the brightest at that age and can be outsmarted easily. Ascend! Never mind my weapon that's clear out in the open. The twerps are so consumed with themselves that they spill the king's secret location. Pristine Sancta Mami? <laughs> Between Ploymus Mountain and the domain behind the waterfall. That part I understood. Into the secret waterfall entrance I go. Oh great, Stingray Man is here with him. And he's still doubting my trust, just like in Breath of the Wild. Forget you, man. I'm here for the king. Unlike his advisor, King Dorofan sees no lies in my eyes. However, he did have an unfortunate encounter with Zelda. He claims the princess sicked a sludge monster against him. The king was able to vanish the fiend, but was injured during the bout and has gone into hiding since to not cause any tumult among his people. The plus side is, he knows what the mark of the king is. It's one of his own scales. When discussing with Sidon what all this could mean, I realized the watery bridge was right in front of my eyes. Tulin, give me a boost. Yep, there it is. This is definitely the land of the skyfish. And there's the droplet. So what am I supposed to do? Take a picture of it? Glide through it? What does it mean? Seriously, historian, what does it mean? Shoot an arrow with the king's scale. Oh yeah, you already said that. Bruh. Who doesn't skip over the text from time to time? It can't only be me. Anyways, I shoot the arrow with the king's mark, revealing a green pillar of light. Drop in and nothing happens. Sidon, I need you to focus and stop oogling over your fiance for one gosh darn minute. Admittedly, I don't blame you. But that's besides the matter. The sludge leaky that harmed the king is after us now. Sidon, hydrify me. I'm going in. With Sidon's water shield intact, my next attack spews water from my blade, rinsing the leaky leaky of its protective layer of sludge. <clears throat> I've been hit. Sidon, cover me. The leaky's tongue is exposed. Move in. Here's one swing. Now here's a barrage of swings. The tube-like creature burrows underground, then comes back above ground with a new layer of sludge. Not for long. Tulin joins in during the next beatdown. That splendid start did make me a bit too comfortable getting too close to the voracious monster. Sidon's water shield also proved useful as a form of defense that would often nullify me from taking damage from the next hit, resulting in our victory over the mini-boss. The area is secured. However, Sidon is having second thoughts of coming with me so he can stay and protect his fiance. Yona insists she'll be fine without him for a while, to which Sidon responds, But I... Then Yona interrupts with a stern, Enough is enough! I'm sensing a red flag here. She's seeing someone when he's not around. I mean, she is a baddie. Before going with Sidon, I seeked out one more shrine to gain another heart. Along the way, I glided across a geoglyph, bringing about another memory. Raru receives word that the last free village in Gerudo Desert has fallen. Defeating the Demon King seems unlikely at this point, so he enlists the help of the sages by empowering them with sacred stones. Is there a stone that can make my hands not slip while climbing in the rain? Jeez, I hate this weather. Back of the Pillar of Light, Sidon creates a whirlpool around the luminescent, uncovering a pathway down below in the sewers of Hyrule. I blow up the debris blocking the water flow in order to raise the floods connecting me with more of the drain system. Who's putting these rocks here in the first place? Being a plumber wasn't as great as Mario made it seem to be, so I fell back on my old and reliable cheesing habit of skipping ahead. I turn on some kind of switch that brings down a waterfall from a sky island above this spot. The real adventure starts now, Sidon. I didn't expect what would come next though, a decrease in gravity. The other way to get around up here is through these water bubble thingamajigs. Personally, I prefer jumping like an astronaut through space. To top off this over and above sky climb was a huge gap that could only be flown across with my custom built aircraft. Sidon and I had finally arrived at the water temple. My best bro suggests that we should use the temple's water vessels to clean out the sludge polluting the Zoras. A mysterious voice confirms the faucets can indeed do just that, then pinpoints the locations to turn them all on. The first one I went for was a royal pain. 
The Switch is in that top compartment, spinning like that maniacal teacup ride from Disneyland. I spent all early afternoon to past midnight just trying to figure out what I can put in to stop that apparatus. Then I was like, F it. I'm eyeballing this with my bow and arrow. Oh, lucky shot! Sidon, water me. Got one spout flowing, three to go. The second water wheel was nothing like a roulette compared to the first one. I simply used my ultra hand to conduct electricity, opening the gate to the second wheel. The third was simple as well. I transported an orb using floating water, followed it in a similar fashion, saw that the water needed to be drained so it could roll in where it needed to be. I opened the gate freeing water from the pool, then I reverted it so I could quickly throw water on the wheel while its doorway was opened. As for the fourth faucet, I couldn't do it alone. Thank you, Sidon. Tediousness then ensued when I had to lug an orb safely over spikes with the constant repositioning of platforms. Overall, though, it was pretty bliss for a dungeon. With all of the spouts pushing out water, the sludge began dissolving, but something sprung from it as well. It's... It's kind of a small fry. This creature must be responsible for the sludge, but Sidon and I can take it. Of course, right when I get overconfident, the critter takes the form of a shark. Ugh, Sidon, water me! I want to see if this thing is even an actual threat. That's it? You get a little water sprayed on you, then you're cowardly and vulnerable to attacks? That had to be a fluke, right? Nope, it is that simple. Halfway through, what are you up to now? Spewing sludge everywhere? Is that the only difference? Yes, it is. It really is that easy. Sure, the sludge can slow down Link when trying to chase the muck to rock, and there are sludge waves to avoid, but in the end, I thought it was all very doable. The mysterious voice from before was, you guessed it, Sidon's ancestor just like it was with Tulin. She is also the Sage of Water. She then tells Sidon the same imprisoning war story that the Wind Sage told to Tulin. The Demon King invaded, Raru sacrificed himself, and Zelda recruited her to work with us in the future. She bestows the power of the Sage of Water over to Sidon, who then in turn gives me some of his power in the form of a ring. The sludge withers away from Zora's domain, and King Dorofan believes the courageous acts of Sidon show it's time to pass the kingdom to his son. Sidon's coronation is held right away, and the residents cheer, showing their approval. Oh hey Impa, fancy seeing you here. She cuts straight to the chase, saying I should be investigating a nearby geoglyph since there's no longer sludge covering it. All work and no play makes Michael a dull boy. I didn't find your geoglyph, Impa, but I found this terrifying thunder gliok. I am not ready to die. How about a game of Jenga instead? Steady. Steady now. Looking good. It's getting tougher. I gotta pull this one out fast. No, no, the ball! Forget the game. I'm Link and I have an Ultra Hand. Gotcha. While I'm heading northeast, I might as well see if Robbie's lab has any cool tech like Breath of the Wild did. I heard the Yiga Clan had a branch in this area. What makes you so sure of that? Because I am with the Yiga Clan. <laughs> Something must be done. The Yiga have taken over this sector. Knock, knock. It's Link. Get ready for battle. A foot soldier and blade master greet me outside, commencing our skirmish. Ah, Lord Zeus, help me. And flip. Wow, thank you, Zeus, for answering my prayers by killing both of them. Robbie's lab was compromised by the Yiga, and they even kidnapped a tailor. You're not with the Yiga clan, are you? No, but I can't let you go free wearing that. Right to jail, right away. Thanks for the Yiga armor, and now it's time to pursue more nonsense. I invade a pirate ship and kill their captain. Look at me, I'm the captain now. Oh, brother, what's wrong with this tower? The door won't open? The Rito says push or pull, it won't budge, then asks me to scoop up some mush rooms for him in a nearby cave. That's suspicious. Eh, who am I to judge an addict? It's gonna have to wait anyways because this was my last bomb and I need more to demo my way in. Looky looky, another geoglyph. Ganondorf is seen leading an army of Gerudo. Hyrule will bow down before me. A swarm of Molduga are summoned by the tune and head straight towards a unit of Hyrule. Raru takes a stance, powering up, as does the Queen and Princess Zelda. Together, they obliterate the School of Sandfish. I'm left with questions. There's a Sage Gerudo, yet there are bad Gerudo? 
what's going on? Well, I'm gonna go to Gerudo Town and find out. But first, I need to cook some chill shrooms for some heat resistance. To Gerudo Town, were. Let me guess, the tower isn't working. Of course it isn't. Where's the repairman? In what world does this make sense? You can fix an advanced technological sky tower, but are useless when it comes to elevators? Look at me. Does it look like I know what I'm doing? This is no better than a kindergartner's craft stuck together with Elmer's glue. Get me out of here before I slap you upside the head. At least something came good of it. Two geoglyphs. Again, we see Ganondorf leading the Gerudo, this time apologizing to Raru for his delay in pledging allegiance to Hyrule. Raru understands this means a great deal since only one male is born to the Gerudo every 100 years and is made their king. Ganondorf returns the kind words of honor, mentioning that Raru and his sister are the only Zonai left in the world. After Ganondorf parts, Zelda says she believes the man has dark ambitions. Raru is aware as well too. That's why he wants him close. There is nothing to worry about. Are you sure about that? Before seeing the next memory, I spotted a tower on the left. Holy freak, the tower is completely snowed in. I may as well spelunk this cave while I'm here. Yosh! Now let's go to the second geoglyph. Did you know Zelda is a klutz? Oh. Oh, saved by Revert. Queen Sonya teaches Zelda how she uses her time powers as it could help Zelda return to her time. However, Zelda is conflicted because she wants to go back to the present, but also wants to stay and help the past. Zelda then expresses her confidence in Link, protecting the present. A hero is he? He is so very dedicated, and he refuses to back down from any challenge. Please don't kill me! Please don't kill me! Gerudo Desert's unique phenomenon is a sand shroud. You guys live in a desert. Shouldn't you be used to this? You are selling a headband for 450 bucks? In this economy, lady? Supposedly, these three men are the first to be allowed to do business with the Gerudo. They normally ban males from any of their dealings. But Benja here somehow convinced them and pulled it off. Gerudo Town is full of women, and to us, that means it's a utopia! I knew it! I knew you weren't there for research reasons! Forget you all, I'm not gonna just sit here while the town is in eyesight. Let's get going, Tulin. Ah, dang it, the radar's out. Well, as long as I keep going straight, I should get there eventually. Now I just need to sneak in past the walls. Wait a second. Where is everyone? I'm over here. What is that? The only sane question one can ask themselves in a ghost town like this is, what can I loot? I didn't find any noteworthy valuables, but was intrigued by what was drawn on the chalkboard here. Maybe there's something in the well. A message in a bottle? That could be something good. It's you, at long last. You, the Vo, reading this letter, are the Vo I was fated to meet. You must hurry and rescue me. I'll go upstream to... Wait, there's a another bottle? And there's another one? Why are there so many being dropped from this hole? Where are they getting all that glass? Has the captured become an insane alcoholic? Are they alone? A vo! There's a vo here! Stop him! Well, rules are rules. Men aren't allowed in Gerudo. Hold on. The Gerudo captain explains to the guards that I'm allowed here for helping their Naboris problem in Breath of the Wild. She fills me in on their current issues, including the zombie invasion they've been dealing with that are called Gibdos. For that reason, everyone is hiding underground. Everyone except for Riju, who is training in the North Ruins. Thanks for the briefing, Captain. Now to confront the lady sending down the bottles. Get out of here! That's okay, because guess who's now in Utopia, Benja? Not you! Alright, I had my time in the sun. What kind of training is Riju up to? Ah! Mr. Gen. Hey, Lassie. Anything I can do to help? Fire an arrow at the dummy? You got it. Ah! Look at that firepower. Chief, a swarm of Gibdos are attacking Kara Kara Bazaar. I'll meet you over there, Riju. Just as the Gibdo zombies were about to overwhelm the oasis, Riju and I arrived at the nick of time, striking down the Gibdo front lines. Riju does need time to recharge her lightning, which is crucial because the Gibdo are practically invincible, except when it comes to fire and electricity. We're holding them off, but they don't seem to stop coming. Apparently, the swarm of Gibdos is coming from that mushroom-like hive. Well, let's change our focus to that then. Fire at will, Riju. Zelda? It's probably one of those fakes like the previous ones we've seen. Whenever she's around, bad natural disasters have a knack for showing up. Riju doesn't know though since she wants to chase Zelda who's heading into danger. For better or worse, 
Link is a silent protagonist, so no warning is given to reach you. One thing is for sure, back in Gerudo Town, three hives likely means a Gibdo attack is imminent. I suggested we should rip them apart now, but they're too durable until they open and release zombies. Riju makes me their temporary general to organize their defenses. I place a cannon at the north gate, spear troops on the west side with a barricade, and sword troops to cover the east. While waiting, I took the liberty to sit on a Vo and Yu class underground. As the special male guest, the ladies can get some practice talking to a member of the opposite sex. I... I can't! I can't look directly at his face! Come on, I'm not that bad looking. Am I? If you hid your face, it would be easier. So I am ugly? Look away, I'm... I'm hideous. No time to mourn about my looks. The Gibdo are beginning their assault. Soldiers, take the west and east wings. I'll take care of the north. Charge it up, Riju, and wha-bam! Ah, that's right. I need to wait for the right moment. Enemies are now pouring out of the hive near the north gate. Riju, let's try it again. Yes! That hive is out of action! There's only two zombies left here. I'll leave them to you, ladies. Ah, come on, east gate. You let two slip in? West wing isn't perfect either. The question is if that hive is still vulnerable since it's already done spawning creeps. Yes, let's go. The mini map shows a Gibdo here, but I don't see any. How's it moving right through the walls? Come out, you undead. Show yourself. Oh, no. Oh, they fly now. They fly now? They fly now. The East Hive somehow can spew butterfly winged Gibdos. That's just wonderful. Holy crud, how many of them are over here? Oh, no, you don't. That's the last of the hives. All we have to do now is clear out the rest of the Gibdos. Oh, jeez, oh, jeez, oh, jeez, oh, jeez, oh, jeez. Oh, that should be the last of them, and I officially hate those crawling ones more than the butterflies. After our victory, Riju says there's something I should see in the shelter. Oh, Link, you came. That's what she said. What she wanted to show me was a mural painted by her ancestors which stated, Back to back with the throne, unite the red pillars in light to reveal the lightning stone. And that's just what I do. From behind the throne, I take in the view. Then I go seek out those red pillars. I beelined it straight ahead leading me to the first pillar. I then looked at which way the mirror was facing, then took off in that direction to find another. If I ever got lost, these updrafts would provide me vision over the shroud. Then I'd occasionally run into literal seas of sand that would drain my stamina like nothing thing I've seen before. I'd eventually make it to the second tower which had no rods attached to its turn wheel. So down a level I went to find the missing rods with no stairs to assist me in getting them up there. This calls for an unorthodox method of transporting those tools. Once I placed my floating whatchamacallit, I had a limited amount of battery life timing me to get to the ceiling in order to grab it again with my ultra hand. Or if you move too far from it... No! This time I pulled out two batteries from my personal inventory so I could elevate up slowly and steadily. Even with it fixed, it can be hard to see the effect this device is actually doing, which is shifting the direction of the mirror below. As for the third pillar, most of it's beneath sand. Thus, rotating this one raises the height of the third pillar, uniting the pillars in light after I uncovered the brightness at the first. In the center of the light triangle is what we assume to be the stone without lightning. We provide an easy solution to that, springing up a temple from the sands. Full of hives, I may add. Breaking from a massive egg is an abhorrent giant scourge, the Queen Gibdo. So we're having the boss fight before entering the temple? That shakes things up, literally. It's the one stirring up the sand shrouds in the desert. Charge up that lightning, Riju. She's charging right at us. Now our attack should be effective. A one hit KO? With all my hearts? Change of plans, Riju. I need to keep my distance. Even after removing its protective layer, I maintain enough space and wait for the right moment with lightning again. Then it retreats and flies up toward the roof. We're not gonna let it get off that easily, so we enter the temple, and oh my gosh, seven floors! All consisting of trials as progress is made through them. There's fire, fireballs, Gibdos on fire, so on and so forth until we reach the room of ascension with a ceiling so high, just about every Every story can be accessed here. A mysterious voice, ah, who am I kidding? We all know it's Riju's ancestor. She tells us the platform will take us to the top of the temple if we power the four batteries, then marks their locations. They're mainly straightforward lightning and light puzzles. Uncover the light, 
make way for the light, watch light open new doors, a few other things to do make the path safe for Riju. And yeah, I think you get it. If you do get it, you'd know liking this video would be a great help too. And why not subscribe while you're at it? Well, all four batteries are juiced up and the platform is ready to rise. Up we go to the penthouse, where we meet the queen of the Gibdos. Having already been through this before, I take aim and fire. Then take a crack at it again with its white skin exposed and die. You know what I really need to get better at? Making a habit of cooking. I have barely any meals, yet I own all of these ingredients. Coulda, woulda, shoulda, Andrew. We're already in the thick of it, so we're just gonna have to make it work. After the first lightning bolt from Riju, the queen cowers behind the three tornadoes it summons, and then another three. I bolt to the side, until I find an open shot past the whirlwinds to signal Riju's power. Lying after being struck in its white skin, I pull out a two-handed sword to maximize damage by swinging. I hesitate when I see it getting up, changing direction right as it charges at me. I pull off a snipe, take the moment to ingest some fish, then do it all over again. The queen summons Gibdo reinforcements to her aid, including the winged ones. Since Riju's recharging, I take matters into my own hands with fire arrows, then sprint to avoid the queen's spit. Riju's ready again. Let's fry one of those hives. Freaking A! It's the fast crawling ones. Hold up, look at that one. These freaks are weak to light. Each of these hives are blocking an incoming source of light. This means we're knocking two birds out with one stone. Not only are we eliminating the sources of Gibdos, we're also adding to the arsenal with these sky roofs. No more help, Miss Queen. It's just you and us now. Now stop moving. Stop it. Will you just stop it? There we go. Sheesh. Okay, team. Say goodbye to Her Highness. Hasta la vista, baby. Like clockwork, the sage ancestor shows herself to us and shares different details about the imprisoning war. Ganondorf was the Gerudo chief until his obsession for power transformed him into a monster. The lightning sage accepts responsibility for his very existence and commits to Zelda's plan. Riju accepts the mantle as the new lightning sage and yada 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 you all know the rest. The Gerudos leave the underground to return to their homes and I find it interesting that we didn't go into the sky for this phenomenon. I'll let you ladies have your fun. As for me, I'll take a break and cheese a few shrines. By the way, do you remember the mushroom addict Rito? It turns out that he doesn't need mushrooms to repair the tower door. You're supposed to ascend from underneath, similar to the snowed in tower. Then you'll find the sliding door is stuck because of two sticks. And voila! Problem solved. I only need to find three more towers to complete my map, so I'm gonna seek those out with whatever comes in between. Two towers remain and a geoglyph is within eyesight, which means memory time. Zelda draws a dagger, then hurls it at Queen Sonya. That's quite out of character for Zelda, but Sonya does not fear thanks to her time powers. This Zelda is a puppet of Ganondorf's, which means most likely that Zelda I've been seeing is a puppet too. Oh, I stand corrected. It was the real Zelda who had stop the dagger midair. Puppet Zelda laughs it off and drifts away into darkness. <laughs> Ganondorf! Sonya's secret stone! He killed her! He totally outsmarted them! He, whoa! Really caught me off guard with that smile. Go to your happy place, Andrew. The second last tower. No obstacles here, just how I like it. On my way down from being shot up, I found a sky island with a slide. Wee! Wait! How come I'm not sliding? Ah, I see where this is going. Shield surfing, baby! Cowabunga, dude! I swiftly pass through every ring, rewarding me with a bonus shrine. My adventures continue to range, big to small, from majestic dragons to finally getting around to visiting Hatino Village. The lab is inaccessible without Robbie at the moment. However, Pura's room at the top of the lab is unlocked. I dove into her diary and read that she manipulated her age to be 20 years old with perfect skin. That does mean she's like over 100 years old, though. I'm okay with that. Let's see what the rest of the village is up to. Prima, you're married? Not to Cricket Sky, I hope. You can do way better. No, you're one of them. What's with those mushroom hats? Whatever, I just hope that the house I put a lot of dough into from Breath of the Wild is still mine. Is that a lady frolicking in the flowers? A man with a goat? Somebody cooking? Who are you people? <gasps> Zelda's journal is in my house. Does that mean we tied the knot? 
She even has a secret well on my lot. I don't know what's so secret about it, but I don't care. I think we're finally official. What I don't understand is why is everyone dressed like they came from the Mushroom Kingdom? Yeah! Yahoo! Hello! It's because of this lady. Her name is Cece. She's supposedly a world-renowned fashion designer, but the mayor has had enough of her shenanigans. I was on his side until he started blaming the bright clothing for waking up the vegetables, which he believes is what Hatino should be known for. Cece responds saying she's now running for mayor to take his spot. Eh, I don't like to get into politics on this channel, especially when the deciding issue is what do we want Hatino to be known for, veggies or fashion? Hey, it's Cricket Boy. That's right, your name is Manny. Thank goodness Prima didn't choose you. Oh, brother, he's moved on to a different chick now, Miss Ivy. And she wants 100 frogs. No, I'm not doing this again. I'm out of here. Cece's sister, anything I can do to help with the campaign? Quite the contrary. She wants me to spy on Cece. The mayor's wife has a similar request. She wants me to sneak into her husband's shed to find out what he's been planning. The shed is locked at all times, but that can't stop the hero of the wild. I read the mayor's diary. He's developing a new type of pumpkin. That's a twist. Then I followed Cece, who's eating carrots in secret. That's very twisty. Enough with politics. I want to check out the school Zelda helped start. I had the privilege of sitting in on a class during a history lesson about the calamity. Isn't that just a fairy tale? You got any pictures or proof to back up this so-called 10,000 year old calamity? Trust me, kids. I fought this thing. All right, tourist time is over. I'm getting that last tower. Oh, great. What is it now? You know what? Don't even tell me. I'll figure it out. Well, there's the issue. What lunatic put this on top of the roof? No matter. I got what I came for. A full map for the sky and surface. Next up, Geoglyph. Zelda recalls two moments, one where Raru managed to restrain Ganondorf, and another where Link couldn't. During this time of contemplation was the very moment when Zelda received the Master Sword from me. The blade signals that Link is safe. It traveled through time to find Zelda and recover its strength. All of a sudden, Zelda recalls what Raru told her. Zelda, I believe there is a reason you were sent to us. It has to mean something. The music gets intense. She knows why. What is the reason Zelda was sent to the past? Tune in next time, cause for now, I think I've stumbled upon Korok Forest. The Master Sword must be in there somehow. Unfortunately, the Dark Mist sends me away from the woods. Fine, if it won't let me in, I'll dive into the depths, then ascend from underneath. To my surprise, there's Korok trees down here. Did the woods get relocated to the basement? Ugh. I'm being choked by demon hands. But thankfully, I got summer. while I'm down here, I might as well activate a few light roots, since my cartography has been scarce concerning the depths. Then all of a sudden, a familiar tune rang by. Do you want a banana? Why, yes. Who wouldn't say yes? Mmm, bananas. I can't get enough. Wait, bananas? Doesn't the Yiga clan like... <laughs> It was a trap! Oh, I should have seen that coming! I just didn't expect them to be down here in the depths. Ah, crap. A black Hinox covered in gloom? Riju, supercharge me! Unlike previous surprise encounters, I was well prepared for this one and had the help of my sage friends. Also, my weapons I had on hand were powerful enough to slay this giant in no time. Better luck next time, Yiga Clan. This is a Colosseum, so to the victor go the spoils. A Korok mask that shakes when one is nearby. I have I haven't seen any of those little guys down here, but I don't blame them. I spent the next couple days doing menial quests and shrines until I had maxed out my stamina. I've also been hearing talk of a giant white stallion and a horse god in the South Farron area. Except the horse god had already left, but the great white stallion can still be found here. I float down onto the steed, beginning the taming process to which I am successful. At first, it reminded me of attaining the royal horse in Breath of the Wild, but soon realized they're really not that similar. Hey boys, check out my horse. Wow! One saddle, please. What? What do you mean you don't have a big enough bridle or saddle? I don't know what the hell you feed him, but he is too big. They're just jealous. Totally off topic, but I just realized this is the last geoglyph. Let's see what the memory is. It's a sad day in early Hyrule. We see Raru mourning the death of his beloved Sonya before Zelda comes walking in. She informs Raru that she knows for certain that the same man Link and her found underground was in fact Ganondorf, still alive, 
still powerful. Zelda exclaims there's no way they can defeat him because he'll just survive and wreak havoc upon Hyrule in the future. Raru disagrees. That was a future where Zelda never appeared in the past, but this time Zelda is with them. Link snaps back to reality after hearing the cry of a dragon. The light dragon flies above him, then sheds a tear. Oh, I get it. Tears of the kingdom? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Since that was the last geoglyph, this must be the memory that ties them all together. And I know exactly where that is. Shortcut! We cut to a shot of Zelda pondering her thoughts. She remembers how Ganondorf said the Master Sword shatters against his power. She recalls the Deku Tree mentioning the sword can continue to gain strength with sacred power. And Sonya discerned Zelda has sacred power to dispel evil. Zelda knew what she must do. The transformation had begun. She grabs a hold of the Master Sword, holds it tight, then yells out to Link to protect them all. Zelda was human no more. She had become the Light Dragon. Thus, the tears of the kingdom fell throughout the land. That was her. That was Zelda this whole time. Zelda, I miss you. Just hold still for a moment. Impa sent me on this mission, so I reported back to her everything I had learned, including how Zelda can never return to her original form. Impa believes there must be a way. Well, of course there's a way. This is a Nintendo game for Pete's sake. Did anyone actually believe that for a second? Still, there is one more phenomenon that I've not checked on around Death Mountain. It is one hot, fiery mess up there. So in order to prepare, I inquired of the people at the Woodland Stable for advice. Since they helped me get up there in Breath of the wild. Hey mate, the lava's all cooled down. What? No way, that can't be. You're saying I can walk straight to Goron City without any fire protection? <laughs> nice. Before reaching Goron City, I came upon a restaurant selling marbled rock roast that's making the Gorons look possessed. It's a new rock that was discovered after the upheaval, and saying the Gorons are obsessed with it would be an understatement. I feel like I'm about to be kidnapped and taken away in a white van. Hey, over here. It's important. This is officially creeping me out. Now they're trying to rip me off, only offering three rupees per piece of ore I have. The city is no better. It's a disaster here. Nobody's working. The unemployment rate has got to be shooting through the roof. You all talking about marbled rock roast, are ya? Yonobo? Did you have a glow up? Well, if it ain't Link, you're so tiny I barely noticed ya. Rude. One of the little Gorons mentions that Yonobo has been conversing with Zelda about marbled rock roast. Yonobo blurts at the young Link to pipe down and that he can't help me find Zelda. Hmm, do I sense a sussy baka? Oh, my back! Sounds like a job opening. And according to this guy, Yunobo's company is hiring. They're holding interviews at HQ right now. Hey, little kid, I hope you don't mind me souping up your minecart. Hold on. Oh, good, you're here. We have a dire staffing shortage at the moment. Yeah, no kidding. I'll purchase the flame breaker armor and boots so I can start ASAP. Right as I clocked in, I stumbled upon Zelda requesting Yunobo to mine the marble rock roast. The little ones ask him to remove his mask because they suspect it's making him not act like himself. Yup, I agree. Puppet Zelda is mind controlling him. The Yunobo I know is shy and cowardly. Let's brawl. Shatatata, shatatata, shatatata. Missed me, whack. The mask is breaking. All I gotta do is dodge his roll a couple more times, give him a good smack on the head, and the Yunobo we know is now freed. Shortly after, the caves begin to rumble, covering the exit with marble rock. Not to worry, with Yunobo on our side, I can direct his fiery rolling attack into the mineral blocking our way out. Outside, Yunobo is surprised by the red hay spouting from Death Mountain. His last memory was talking to Princess Zelda, but doesn't recall anything after putting the mask on. Well, something's obviously wrong with the volcano, so let's go climb up, Yunobo. Actually, no. Let's not climb. I have a faster way inside the tunnel. Ascension! Works every time. Before summiting the peak, I take a Zonai four-wheeler for a spin in some lava. I'm just a country boy with a big old truck. We spot Zelda atop the Alp. She walks into the gloom, stirring up what I thought at first was an eruption, but she was summoning the three-headed Moragia. All hands to battle stations. Yunobo, you thinking what I'm thinking? This isn't what I was thinking at all! <laughs> Can... 
Mission complete. Credit where credit is due. I thought Yunobo was only acting tough because of the mask, but he's grown to be a courageous fellow since my last adventure with him. I'm right behind you, buddy. Into Death Mountain we go. The Rito and Zora temples were in the sky. Gerudo's was on the surface, and it looks like the Gorons will be in the depths. Uh-oh, there's nudity down here. Thanks to that shrine from earlier, I know just the kind of vehicle to cross the lava. The only way I ride, I keep a jack The source of the red haze must be from the fire temple. Inside, we see Zelda surrounded by marbled rock that elevates her to the ceiling, which then proceeds to entrap her. Yunobo worries for the false princess and insists we need to unlock the five padlocks to save her. I hesitate knowing she's not the real deal, but the voice of Yunobo's ancestor states otherwise. Then marks where we need to go. See that gong? right there? There's likely some sort of puzzle I need to solve in order to open the gate, but I have another idea. Keep going! You're good! You're good! You're good! And stop! Now I simply drive under the room where the gong is located and use a send. Wait, that's illegal! First gong banged, first padlocked cracked. There's gotta be another one like that. I see that yellow dot getting closer. Ascend! That guy is cheating! He's cheating! Two down, three to go. Okay, okay, I'll stop. But it's not by choice. The third one is actually going to take some thinking. I grabbed a hydrant and created a few cooled magma platforms. Position it like so, and wha-bam! Two remain. Gong number four means it's time to bring out the minecarts. Wahoo! <laughs> That was it? I was expecting more of a thrill. How could I make the next ride more exciting? Ah oh, yeah, now we're talking. Three, two, one, lift off. <laughs> My bad, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Screw it, rocket shield. So does that make a total of three gongs I reached the wrong way? Whatever gets results, am I right? Now let's head on in to free fake Zelda from those rocks. I command you, Nobo, to roll up the round walls to take a crack at the ceiling. Is that the Eye of Sauron? I see. It's coming down towards us. Looks to be some kind of rock spider. Yunobo, I believe it has a clear weakness. Hold your position in front of me and let it rip. The marbled goma drops marbled rock bombs, but I simply ignore them and go for another limb. With only two legs left, the arachnid falls to the ground. Like past scourges, I wield a two-handed weapon, then show them no mercy. I repeat the tactic to outstanding success, scratching the eye so badly that the brute jumps and clings to the top of the dome. I immediately draw my bow and shoot its eye. But it was the tried and true method of using Yunobo's fiery roll that brought the beast back down. No amount of bombs could hold us back. Its demise was inevitable. Yunobo's ancestor, the Sage of Fire, conducts the exit interview retelling the imprisoning war, passes down the secret stone, then Yunobo and I fist bump. Ow. I hope it doesn't hurt that bad every time I call upon the Sage of Fire. Back in Goron City, the marbled rock roast withers away, releasing the Gorons from the Dark Scarlet Possession. I give Pura the good news that all of the phenomena have been taken care of. Oh, the things I would do for you to beat me with that stick. You know, Zelda is no longer human anymore. Uh, isn't that... <gasps> Link, look at this! Why the big rush? Oh crap! Hoora, I promise that is not her. She ain't buying it and asks me to rescue her. Eh, not yet. I need to help someone else first. Josha, head of Depth's research, has asked me to find the statues engraved on this mural. If I follow the directions they face, I should discover a new temple. Before beginning my excursion, a spirit called a Poe that can communicate through its grave tells me the location of another Poe. I could be down here for a while, so I better make the most of it. This Poe cracks me up. He tells me to stay a moment, then the screen fades to black it fades back to us and now he's got a tunic to sell who do you think you are the quickster want to see me run to that mountain and back you want to see me do it again there's the statue joshua was talking about and it's facing that way so in that direction i go crikey there's a ginormous frog up ahead it's trying to suck me in Tulin, get us out of here. Ooh, another statue. Hour after hour, statue after statue, eventually led me to a Yiga hideout where the ninjas were driving surveillance cars. Excuse me, can I borrow your ride? 
think you want to be shy guy. Although there doesn't seem to be an entrance for vehicles. Nothing the ultra hand can't take care of. Scratch that. I mean revert. Their hideout doors look to be well guarded with some sort of impenetrable spell tag. That is until I snipe down the foot soldier with the magic circle. <laughs> Dispelled. I looted a schematic of theirs and crystal charges. Then it was back to following the statues. They led me to an abandoned Gerudo mine, but that's no temple. I literally spent a couple in-game days here and in the surrounding areas because I was convinced I had missed the next statue to follow. I found another mine, another Yiga hideout, and my map was looking more fleshed out. Then would you believe it? I came across a third mine, the great abandoned central mine. Except unlike the others, there were Hylians already here. Their research had come to a halt since they didn't know what to do with this green circle. I, of course, activate it, to which this construct then begins conferring auto-build to me. Auto-build? There was a missing ability this whole time and I didn't notice. And this is how the schematics are used like the ones I stole from the Yiga. <laughs> Pretty nifty. Ah, bamboozled again. <gasps> It's Master Koga! I am the leader of the Yiga clan! The strong, the death-defying, from the ashes rising, Master Koga! My man just summoned a battle vehicle like it was nothing. He did leave a big, vulnerable opening in the back, perfect for me to sneak up on him. The man is so talented, though, retreating both him and the car with a single smoke bomb. Drat, Yunobu's role has no effect. Koga, stop the car. Slow down, man. You don't want to do this. I'm actually a big fan of yours. Riju, let's show him the thunder. We could have been partners. It's no use. He's not listening. He just floored it at me. Missing, then crashing into the barrier. Your mistake, Koga. I'm off to the southwestern abandoned mine, so don't follow me. I know where that is, Koga. Fortunately for you, I have a mine to explore. In the basement is another Poe. A gigantic Poe. It says it's trapped under the water behind the stone gate of the Great Plateau. Oh man, I had totally forgotten to visit the Great Plateau. Well, here's the water, and there's the stone gate. I kaboom the debris, draining the water. Water from the gate. And there's the Poe. I'm gonna cut to the chase. This Poe sends me on a fetch quest. <sighs> Let me breeze through this for ya. Poe sends me to the goddess statue, which guides me to four chasms near the Poe's eyes. Chuck, 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 chuck. Now I have to return all four of them to the gigantic Poe by plane, by minecart, by car, and by foot. I will repay your kindness by bestowing good fortune upon you. A heart container? That's it? I was expecting something much more valuable, like a cool weapon or something. A whole day wasted. Where's Master Koga? I need a smile. It's the right hand, right? So why isn't this working? <laughs> I'll battle you, I'll beat you, and I'll steal the power from you. Oh, Koga, you silly man. Again, Koga retreats, this time to the East Mine. Team Yiga's blasting off again. I'll chase him down if I ever come across the mine. The Great Plateau got me thinking that I should probably visit Kakariko Village too. If Impa's gone, who's in charge here? p p Paya? You're the new chief? I haven't seen you since that one night we had together. Zelda may be a dragon, but Pura is my girl now. Sorry, Paya. She showed me the ring ruins that appeared in Kakariko after the upheaval. I wanted to get a closer look, but this dweeb wouldn't let me per Zelda's orders. They don't know. Back to the temple search, I guess. Josha, I cannot find those statues. So there really is a Zonai temple. Huh? Apparently the central mine was the temple we were looking for. I demonstrated the auto build feature to Josha and informed her of Koga's presence down there. To which she responds there are other statues that could lead to him. Way ahead of you, Josha. With that part of Josha's research done, Robbie decides now is a good time to head back to Hatino Lab. There he updated my Pura Pad with a multitude of upgrades. Hero's Path Mode, not one, not two, but three travel medallions, and the Sheikah Sensor Plus. You know what? Change of plans. I'm going after Koga. <laughs> Nani? So what you saw was just, uh, you know, I was killing time. How many times do I need to teach you this lesson? <laughs> Koga assures me our next encounter will be our last, then flies off to the northern mine. Josha, I need to know where the north mine is. Uh, north? 
I'm just playing. There's a new chasm on the cliff face at Rito Village. Yeah, but what cliff? I don't see any chasm. I even tried finding it by going through the depths. Unfortunately, no matter how much I circled that yellow dot on the mini-map, my progress would come to a halt as I learned it was completely walled off. I could not find it for the life of me. I would descend from Rito's highest point and still could not spot it. One day later... I found one! Ah... See? It's directly below us. I love you, random citizen. I could kiss you. Northern Mine, here I come. I've been waiting for you. The Giga Clan had been building a Zonai construct this whole time, and it was finally finished. After killing me, Koga plans to take his place next to the Demon King below the castle. Not if I have anything to say about- Oh, crap. I only have a quarter of a heart. Sidon, cover me! Dink! Hmm, maybe I'll be fine. I aim again and abort, abort! He's closing in! Ah, drat. I call time out. Give me a second. Time in. It's gonna take a lot more to knock me out now. With over half of his health depleted, Master Koga wises up, protecting himself with a barrier, as do I with Sidon. He tries a new attack, to which I counter by running straight at him. Then he pulls out the spike balls, and with Sidon's shield expired, I suffer a blow. Why don't you back the stink away? With brute force, I successfully shoved Koga into the electric fence, disabling his defenses. That gave me the opening to cut him up some more. I also found a use for Yunobo's fiery roll. Upon making contact, the Goron's flames would stun the war machine, which meant I could shove Koga into getting electrocuted again. Say goodbye. <laughs> I spoke too soon. He's got a swarm of rockets. They're aimed right at me. Oh, yeah. He's an idiot. As I booted up the abandoned mine and collected my spoils, I all of a sudden remembered something I had failed to finish over 20 days ago, finding a way to Korok Forest. Wow, how did I miss that low ceiling when I first got here? Ascend, Eureka! Hey, rise and shine, everybody! Huh? Zack? Marshall? Birdie? Uncle Fungus? Why is everyone frozen? And why is there a spooky chasm inside the Deku tree? Oh no, there's a set of those gloomy hands down here, but no more running from them. The Koroks are obviously under some kind of spell, and I suspect these demons are behind it. Taking them head on was a very bad idea, since one would grab me while I attacked another. I adapted by climbing up the nearest wall, then I would wait until all of the hands had gathered below me. Then I would leap off the wall and repeatedly shoot them with arrows. After landing, I would jolt to the other side, whip out my bow and continue sending arrows in their direction as they crept towards me. I had to be quick though, because they were either reviving or sprouting new limbs. When all of them were low on HP, I went in headstrong and swung my blade at every single one of them until they were gone. And he appeared. Phantom Ganon. Oh no. Actually, compared to those haunted hands, Phantom Ganon was a cakewalk. I just kept my space and repeatedly lunged my spear at him. That was easy. The gloom then dissipated, and the Koroks were back to their free-spirited selves. I asked the Deku Tree where the Master Sword was. It wasn't here, but he could sense it in the sky flying across Hyrule. Oh, that's right. Right! Zelda was holding the sword when she transformed. That means I need to chase her in the sky. Ooh, that looks like it's gonna hurt like a nail on the head. Don't worry, dear. I'll relieve you of the pain in no time. Ouch! Calm down, Zelda. It's the sword causing the pain. It's not about the sword. Are you sure? Because I bet if we got it out of there... Stop trying to fix it. You're not listening. There. It's out. Jeez, that felt like an argument I was having with my wife. I should give Zelda some slack, though. She hasn't been herself ever since becoming a dragon. You know who does deserve a good yelling at is that no-good Zelda fraud that's fooling everyone. My first attempt to paraglide over to the Sky High Castle didn't go over so well because I ran out of stamina. So I yanked a few stamella shrooms from my bag, cooked an energizing mushroom skewer, ate it mid-air, then made attempt number two a successful landing. The false Zelda cries out, Link, come to me. I am waiting then pinpoints her location. There she is. I've got her now. Over here, old friend. In case you haven't noticed, you've fallen right into my trap. 
We all knew this was going to happen, yet I still went to her anyway. I slay her boss Bokoblin, then continue to chase Pseudo Zelda. In the library, she summoned a Hinox. In the hall, she revived some Gibdos. She infested Princess Zelda's room with Lizalfos. Then she stooped down low with a white Moblin and brought me back to the halls waiting with electric Leaky Leakies. The hunt concluded in the Sanctum, where Zelda restores the room in its perfect and glorious form. She spookily states that this will be the last thing I ever see. The zombified version of Ganondorf appears above her, then deteriorates his puppet's human form, revealing its true identity as his dark servant, Phantom Ganon. Oh, this is gonna be easy like that one in Korok Forest. Stab, stab, stab. Huh? Why is its HP hardly scratched? And why are there five of them? What I need is a heavy hitting weapon to wipe out each of the copies fast so I can focus on one. I'll use their own blade against them, the Gloom Sword. It does come with a caveat of gradually wearing down my hearts with gloom. You may be wondering why I don't just use the Master Sword. <laughs> About that. So the battery power is running low. It really could have come in handy during the second wave of phantoms, especially now that there's gloom on the floor too. That's when I decided to pull out my inner call of duty by setting up a tent on the nearby staircase and camp. The headshots led to outstanding results in besting the replicates. The zombied Ganondorf then gets involved with a gloom heavy assault, but it fails due to the four sages showing up disposing of the gloom in a heroic fashion. Ganondorf gets a closer look at the sages, seeing that they carry the secret stones, then disappears back to his body below the castle. The sages begin to worry how the return of Ganondorf can mean the end of the world as they know it. Riju, on the other hand, has hope, suspecting Ganondorf fled because he must not be at his full strength. Who recalls for an emergency meeting at the lookout, finally agreeing to vote off that Zelda as an imposter. Pura recounts all of the information we've given her and points out that we're missing one of the six sages. We have these four, and Zelda was the Sage of Time, but whatever happened to Minoru, the sister of Raru? Could she be the sixth sage? Pura believes a clue can be found in the ruins from the Age of Legends. The only ruins I can think of that fit that description are the ones in Kakariko Village. Paya, you gotta let me check them out. I've proven the Zelda that told you guys not to touch them was a fraud. That means the Demon King sees it as a threat. Finally convinced, they allow me to make my ascent into the floating ruin. I snap a photo of the slab inside, then accidentally fell into a garden full of defensive cuckoos, which led to this old lady lecturing me until morning about her plum trees. What's the matter with kids today? After getting yelled at, I show the picture to Toro. He's the Zonai survey team leader who can translate it. He can't do it alone though, because he clearly cannot see. Paya and him decipher something about a dragon land in the southeast. Thus, Toro and I make haste to the destination described by the ring ruins. He translated a mural there that says to wear the electric garb hidden around this area and then offer a Zonai charge to the altar. The first piece of the set was found right above the mural. It's a charged shirt that increases attack in stormy weather. Toro believes the headdress and trousers are also hidden in chests, but doesn't know the first place to look. Lucky for me, Robbie has hooked up my Pura pad with a sensor plus, meaning I can detect nearby treasure chests with the power of a single picture. All I need to do now is walk until the sensor starts beeping, then follow that signal. There's the charged trousers, and there's the charged headdress. It's down. This must be the altar. I place a spare Zonai charge here, which then attracts the lightning from the clouds above this spot. Those same clouds then disperse, disclosing a cluster of clouds in the sky above. Well, that's obviously where I need to go next, so I teleported to the Great Sky Island, then drifted in that direction. Behold, the Thunderhead Isles, where most of the objects, as you can imagine, attract lightning. And how does one traverse from one isle to the next? Why, a poor man's version of a minecart, of course. By the way, ever since Puppet Zelda was eliminated, she no longer narrates the Blood Moon cutscene. It's just the monsters rejoicing in their revival. I'm alive! Back to Thunderhead Isles where I make an even poorer man's version of a minecart compared to the last one. By some miracle, those three planks did get me to the chamber on the last of the Thunderhead Isles. What lied inside was a mask that when activated with my arm, sent a light down to the surface. The voice of Mineru, the sixth sage, speaks to me saying to take the mask down to where the light meets the surface. You're telling me I have to lug this oversized eyewear thousands of feet to the ground? I ain't in the mood for games, so I take out a couple batteries from my personal inventory that I hardly use to hopefully make this a blissful ride. 
You know what? It could have been worse. The mask sparks another light, which leads to an elevator of sorts, taking us down into the depths. It appears this is just one piece of a larger mechanism with missing parts. Minero speaks to me again and introduces herself as the Sage of Spirit. She no longer has a physical form, but her spirit was transferred into Zelda's Pura Pad and can connect with the mask. Minero asks me to visit four storehouses that each contain a limb to assemble a body for her. Sounds easy enough. Let's get building. I tried transporting this right leg the right way, then I thought, eh, why not just revert? It may not be shattered, but this ability is broken. First package delivered. Left leg is strapped nice and safely with rockets and goes off like an Amazon package. Insert like so, and now let's get the arms. Stretch that ultra hand length like so, and revert. Connected. Hmm, dangerous electric pillar? Eh, revert. That should be the last of the limbs. Out of the way! Construct complete. Come forth, Mineru. Remove thyself from bondage. Ah, right, right. Your secret stone. I forgot. Still, you're free now. Are you feeling it now, Mineru? I'm feeling it, SpongeBob. Patrick, that's not a ride. Get off of me. Mineru's construct can be augmented in a multitude of ways. Its hands can fuse with objects, intensifying its combat capabilities, and its back can fuse with fans to speed up. Wait for me, I got little legs! Then I gave it a grenade launcher. I should have figured there would be a spirit temple. However, unlike the other temples, the secret stone is put right in front of us immediately. I'm sure no trial will catch us by surprise as we walk through this gloom-filled ancient arena. Oh no, could it be? There was a bad guy waiting for us. Who could have seen that coming? That construct, I made it long ago. Hmm, Mineru actually sounds really surprised. Her previous work has been seized by the Demon King to guard the secret stone. It's bigger than us and added an electric fence. Ow. This thing hits hard, and I tried everything I could think of to bring down the machine, yet nothing was working. I even tried doing it on foot, but this gloom floor shows the battle was designed for mech versus mech. Then, I saw the enemy do something. I totally had forgotten about that. It's amazing how often I forget a button for guarding exists. Does it actually do anything, though? It does! In addition to blocking, it stuns the seized construct for a short amount of time, giving me the opportunity to land and a few heavy blows, plowing it into the electrified barbs. Other than that, the battle feels dull and sluggish. The movement speed of Mineru's construct is nothing to write home about, and I haven't seen a significant battle this disappointing full of brain-dead punches since Arrow's season 4 finale. <laughs> And if you mess up once, you already put yourself in lethal range from another blow. Admittedly, that could be a me problem with how much I limit myself with food. After getting slugged a few times, the seized construct grows a couple arms for its second phase, then flies up. Mineru must have been a messy girl since there are cannons lying on the floor here. I normally don't condone messiness, but for this situation, I'll allow it. Target shot down. Have another, will ya? Eventually, I was able to make it through the fight, only being hit once. Mineru's spirit exits the Pura Pad, so she can soar into the secret stone finalizing her integration with the construct. In the spirit world, or whatever this place is we've been having visions with the sages, Mineru grants me her power in the form of a ring like the others. Unlike the others though, we finally get to see in motion what their final fight with Ganondorf was like. Zelda flexes her time powers to bring back the weapons thrown by her allies to distract Ganondorf from the Hyrule King Raru, who takes advantage of the opening to seal Ganondorf with his arm. Pretty sick cutscene, especially seeing Zelda in action. I report to Pura my success in finding the Spirit Sage. She believes preparations are now complete, and that it's time to head into the depths of Hyrule Castle to face the Demon King. Hit the Demon King in the face for me! 
Easy for you to say when you're not going. Personally, I'm getting sick and tired of always being on the brink of death. So I'm going to prepare a few things before going. I want to find the Hylian shield, get some decent armor and upgrade them, cook a few meals, and fuse my weapons. Now, I've already tried looking for the Hylian shield in the castle. I gave it another shot, though, because I thought like the Korok Forest, even though the Master Sword wasn't there like it was in Breath of the Wild, it did direct me to where it was. While checking underneath the castle, I had the realization that some of the fortress was left behind on the surface. Down there I went, where I came across a fire pit with no fire. Well, that never sits right in a Zelda game, so I threw a bomb. Are you kidding me? I could have gotten this within the first couple hours of the game. It was so easy to find. In reality, it's not worth griping about because the rest of my checklist consists of tedious labor. The originality in the underworld has worn out and now feels samey when navigating through the dark terrain. The reason I'm down here though is to find more of the Bargaining Poe statues. I know I poked fun at them before when they act like they're checking the back for extra inventory, like this one is doing right now, but I've decided I want my final battle armor to be their gloom resistance clothing. I can only imagine there will be tons of that stuff where Ganondorf is. So chasm after chasm, I went looking for more of the Poe brethren to complete the set. Whoa. That was an unexpected surprise. Anyways, once I had gathered enough spirits to afford the attire, I traded them over for the armor of the depths. Oh, I just realized someone is going to dye this clothing white, aren't they? What else is disappointing is that it only resists the gloom on the ground. I was hoping it'd also protect your hearts to an extent when getting smacked by a cursed being. I'm still gonna stick with it because you never know with Ganondorf. Until then, I'm gonna bulk up these garments with the help of the great fairies. I found this one early on in my journey. However, the bodacious lady wouldn't show herself unless she heard the sound of a violin. I ignored it at first. But now I'm in need of a musician. To my luck, at the neighboring stable was a violin player and Bob the conductor. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, maestro. You know you hurt the maestro's feelings. <laughs> oh, why? Because I didn't call him maestro. Having offended the maestro, they chose not to associate with me and proclaimed the local newspaper should write about it. That paper being the Lucky Clover Gazette. Another location I brushed off until now because it didn't serve my purposes at the time. Why, hello, Tears of the Kingdom, Tom Cruise. You can be my wingman anytime. It seems the only way I can get the organization's attention is if I apply for their job opening. It's certainly not really the time to take on a side hustle. Conversely, I don't know how else to get the Great Fairy to cooperate without them. My job description entails visiting stables to dig up newsy details about potential Princess Zelda sightings? You're joshing me, right? These two buffoons were the ones who saw Zelda? You know what? I'm not gonna tell them. Their story did detail that the villainous woman was the person who frightened the Great Fairy into hiding. Get in, loser! We're going shopping! You're gonna cheer up the Great Fairy for me. The maestro ended up being dead weight I had to drag around because the violinist performed the whole solo with her eyes closed. Nevertheless, the song worked, reviving the fairy spirits. Behold, Violin! The great fairy graces us with their presence! Her name is Violin? Oh, I just can't with these people. Can we just get to the part when you enhance my clothing, please? Thank you. Of course I didn't have enough deep fireflies because how was I supposed to know I would need those? Thankfully, I have the sensor plus to track them down. Unfortunately, it took me an entire day to gather a sizable amount of them. Defenses have been leveled up. But I wanted more. So I went through the trouble of visiting another stable that was near another great fairy. I solved a few of the stable's dilemmas, which included reining in Zelda's golden horse that had run away. Since when did she get this steed? The horse is dang fast, though. I think I'll keep it. Hey! 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 Stop it! Stop it! Having calmed a few of the stable residents, I then searched for the horn player that got himself trapped in a pit. Why do I need this guy, you may ask? Well, this particular fairy wouldn't come out of her cocoon without hearing the sound of a horn first. Screw the horn. Violinist, play the Wind Waker theme, please. That 
that's the sound a woman wants to hear. But those necessary materials are not what I wanted to see. It was time to overcome my fear and face the gargantuan frog. I quickly learned there was nothing to be scared of. A simple arrow to the eye or bomb thrown inside its tummy makes for a quick death when confronting the enormous amphibian. Unfortunately, there was a glaring problem. This is an obsidian frog's fang. The fairy wants normal frog's fangs. So I spent a whole nother day looking for a normal frox. I slayed the beast the same way I killed the obsidian, then picked up legit frox fangs. However, if I was going to fully upgrade my armor, I needed more of them. And even with the sensor plus, it took me another day to hunt down a second one. With only a few days left until that 100 day mark, I begrudgingly decided that this would be the last frox, meaning I only had enough to enhance a single article of clothing. Then I cooked and I cooked and I cooked cooked, cooked, and cooked. I finished a fourth shrine for one last extra heart and finally got over my inventory hoarding problem. Kind of. I just couldn't part ways with my miscellaneous items, but I had an abundance of Gibdo bones that granted an additional 40 power to each of my weapons. Also, flamethrower shields, cause they're rad. Enough with the preparations! The Demon King has basked too long within the mist of the gloom beneath Hyrule Castle. I delved further and further downwards, where I, I, I got lost. Am I going in circles? I kept ending up in this cavern filled with horriblins that I'd usually run past, yet I was getting nowhere. So I changed my spelunking traversal method twofold. First, I killed the horriblins so I could breathe easy and look around the place. And second, I used the map. Before I knew it, I was zooming past Lynels, riding up reverted objects, freezing up at the sight of leaky leakies, free falling down a square stairwell, blowing up Gibdos, then came to the realization that these are the same ruins Zelda and I discovered at the beginning of the game. Soon after, I jumped into what seemed to be a bottomless pit, with nothing except for a balcony with a gate that was wrapped in corrupted roots. The Demon King must have expected my arrival, sending a welcome party to meet me at the door. Enough of the games, Ganondorf! Come out and face me instead of cowering behind your minions! The Bokoblins couldn't give a dang and proceeded to charge at me. Well, yeah, I know. So why didn't you join me at the beginning of the descent? It doesn't matter. You're all here now. Battle stances. I drew my doom club, which wasn't the brightest strategy to enter battle with. Just look at my hearts diminish with the gloom from it. Although it's just a bunch of bokoblins. I only need one life. You all go for the regulars. I'll take care of the boss. I've got a feeling that's not the end. So I'ma scarf down my sunny fried wild greens to restore 15 hearts damaged by gloom. I hope I don't come to regret eating that. Turns out I was right about reinforcements. It's not the end. The Zolfos appear during wave two. Back to stink up or I'll fry your face off. Stand aside, you nobo. He's mine. Gibdos appear for wave three? Ha! I've never been more ready in my life. Burn! Burn them all! Slow down, tough guy. You ain't crawling up to me that easily. Sages! Moblins are the fourth and likely the last wave. Your arrows are fine, Tulin, but they got nothing on my Gibdo-powered shots. That's the last of the hordes. The way to Ganondorf has been opened. Sidon hesitates. There's something behind us. Oh, you've got to be freaking kidding me. The bosses are back? Boy, this is going to take a hot minute. The sages have another plan, though. They charge into battle without my command. Don't worry about us. Time, Link. The rest is up to you. Thank you, my friends. I won't fail you. Not even a minute later, I arrive at Ganondorf's quarters. The undead being states a few words regarding why this world should be covered in darkness, then regains his peak physical form. The Demon King draws his samurai sword, then proclaims what I'm about to witness is a king's revival. Not if I have anything to say about it, you barefooted old man. Nice try, Andrew. But now is not the time to mess around. The Master Sword is key. Pathetic. Pathetic? Why don't you try this on for size? Flurry Rush! Come at me again! Dodge! Now Flurry- <gasps> Nani? This is the most agile Ganondorf I've ever faced and Flurry Rushes are the only way to get in on him. I don't know how to put it into words. 
when he winds up his arm to swing an attack, he does not attack right away, causing me to second guess myself when to dodge. It was like he was mentally faking me out, baiting me to act sooner or later than I should. Fortunately, this all could be solved with practice, no matter his weapon choice. At this point, I'd say my flurry rushes were successful 90% of the time. Sometimes the king would get greedy, charging his club into the ground, causing an updraft, which I, of course, capitalized on to snipe him in the noggin multiple times. Big swing after big swing, I maneuvered around his strikes and gave him a piece of me. Ganondorf takes a step back, expressing how he had almost forgotten the thrill of a battle, and that he's not even nearing his limits of power. He brings forth the power of the secret stone placed upon his forehead, and transforms into his demon king form. Okay, now you've made this personal. I can't get ahead of myself though. He's made copies of himself. Sorry for keeping you waiting. The sages, all right. Tulin, on my mark. I'll go first. Now you, little guy. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. While the other sages distract the fakes, I'm able to completely focus my attention on the king. As long as I stay aware of surrounding attacks from the counterfeits, I'll be able to flurry rush my way to victory. Halfway through his new health bar, he diminishes his phantom allies. To increase his strength, then blows back the sages. With only me left standing, he beckons me over to him. Having been knocked out, the sages are no longer by my side. It's 1v1 time. Come at me, bro. Yeah, what the? Must have been a fluke, but I found out quickly that it's not. Can I shoot him with an arrow? What am I supposed to do? None of my flurry rushes are landing. He's untouchable. It gets worse. When you lose to his third phase, you have to start back at square one, making it a true test of endurance. I was consistent enough to make it through the first two over and over again. However, I was still in the dark on how to best his third form. Then I tried something. The shield parry. That was my way in when he used his sword. Whenever it was another weapon, he would send a fiery attack that would make it hard to recuperate my position for a shield parry. Or I sometimes straight up sucked. On top of all that, I only had one more meal left that could heal gloomed hearts. I knew I was going to regret eating that other one. My only option was to make my plays more optimal from this point forth. Not the greatest start after healing, but I do swing the momentum back in my favor, landing a shield parry right after. Gloom Club, retreat. Then parry. Arrows, don't stop moving, Link. Keep up the pressure when you got him. The ranged spear, juke those fireballs, then dart the other direction. This could be it. Land it. Yes, it's over, Ganondorf. The demon is not pleased with the outcome, but what else could he possibly be up to? Ooh, that looked like it hurt. Oh, this can't be good. He's gonna be a freaking dragon. Not just any dragon. This is giving me flashbacks to Calamity Ganon and he just bit me on his way out. Ganondorf departs, destroying more of the castle as he exits. The darkness around him eventually uncovers, revealing the sight of his draconic form. How am I still alive? Zelda, I could really use your help right now. Oh good, you're actually here. Her presence angers the dark dragon enough to open his mouth, dropping me into the sky. That's my girl. Link, you were right. My head feels a lot better since taking out that sword. That's great, Zelda. But as much as I love to brag about being right, we got a bigger problem on our hands at the moment. Fly up higher into the sky, Zelda. I need a vantage point to get a good look at him. The demon dragon tries to to stop me with his fireballs. He's clearly losing himself, not aiming properly, giving me the opening to slice up one of his weak points. He flings me off. Zelda catches me. Then we do it all over again. And I gotta say, this is the moment that personally confirmed to me that the gloom-resistant outfit was the way to go. After repeatedly hopscotching back and forth between Zelda and the demon, all four of Ganondorf's weak points were eliminated. This caused the secret stone on his head to flash a bright light, indicating to me that was the last part of him to break. Link, finish him! <laughs> The secret stone shatters. The demon king loses power, eradicating him from Hyrule for good. Link's replaced arm begins to glow, taking him to some sort of spiritual dimension, where King Raru and Queen Sonya appear beside him. 
Together, they use their power on Zelda, returning her to human form. The royalty of old drift away, snapping Link back into reality, above Zelda who's falling while unconscious. Man, I just love how epic they made the ending. Link diving through the air to save the love of his life, and the music, my gosh, the music! The sun in the background, the arms reaching. Link, grab her already! Finally, a somewhat realistic splash. Zelda awakens, confused where she is. The last thing she remembers was swallowing the secret stone. Then she puts everything together, realizing the Demon King is gone. You did it. Oh, Link, you really did it. No, Zelda. We did it. Well, we didn't do it, do it. What I meant was, cause you know, we're still only at first base. Ah, oh, forget it, the sages need to show us something. Actually, it's just Mineru who's saying goodbye to everyone since she has to go to the afterlife now. Having saved Hyrule twice now, what's in store for me next? I got a couple things in mind. First, I got a bone to pick with this Gleok. I can't let you all think I just ran away from it and look like a fool. No, I'll show it who's at the top of the food chain. And did you know that attaching a Kisa's eyeball makes your arrow home in on the enemy? That's OP, and I'm all about it. The last part of the fight was the most difficult. When they fly high and you have to go up there yourself using the updrafts they create which can also be a trap since that's where they're sending down their lightning. Eventually, I did snipe the dragon down with Keys arrows and walked away with pride as the apex predator. There was only one thing left to do now that I've proven myself to be the ultimate war hero. Politics. I started my political career as CC's campaign manager for mayor. Our plan was to bribe Reed voters by offering them mushrooms. Who could say no to a valuable illegal substance? Vote for CC, vote for CC, vote for CC, vote for CC. I also worked undercover for the current mayor by getting him had Tino cheese. He wanted to bribe the town his own way by cooking a tasty pumpkin treat. Plus, he paid me a pretty penny for the work. Now for the debate. Well, that's because he'd rather have a puppet as president of no the United puppet, States. No puppet. And it's pretty clear. You're the puppet. It's pretty clear you won't admit no, you're that the, the Russians. That's enough. Sick of her sister's antics, Sophie reveals that Cece actually likes vegetables. <gasps> Then, Mayor Reed's wife chimes in, exposing that he's been studying Cece's designs. Yeah, <laughs> Politicians. You can't trust any of them. But hey, at least I got this cool hat for being Cece's manager. This was my longest video yet. If you want to help us keep making them, consider becoming a YouTube member. One dollar gets you access to the Discord, and five dollar supporters see their name in the end credits. Least you can do is give the video a like, and subscribe for more Nintendo content. You all have a good one. Thanks.